always good. Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here, and I'm going to tackle the first video that I promised out of this list of 10. Hopefully we'll hit all 10 of them in the next week and a half or so. You're a photographer. Maybe you're interested in photography. And you're sick and tired of the digital world and you want to create something tangible. What could that possibly be? A print, a print on paper, just like we did years ago, decades even, in the wet lab. I did that all my life. And I'm 70 years old right now. So what do you need to do? Well, you need to start researching photo printers. The top two brands at this point, sorry, HP, is Canon and Epson. But what, what am I getting into? Really, what, what should I be thinking about? Because I'm just interested in creating prints on paper of subjects like this. Maybe I like to go to car shows. How about this one? Hmm? Maybe I'm into art. Let's put this over here. Maybe I'm into art. There are apps that you can use to create your shots and transform them into pieces of art like this. Okay, this looks like a painting and it was printed on watercolor paper, not meant for inkjet printers. Amazing. Many things you can do. I'll, I'll show you a few more. Keep, keep that interest going here. How about this? Yeah, how about this? I can go on forever. We, we won't do that today. If you want to see the rest of my work, you can go to my show and tell series, print show and tell series that I did probably a couple of years ago. Interesting. I have about 25 such videos where I go through most of all of my work that I have created with all of my family of printers that I have here. So, yeah, so you see what I mean. There's a, there's a huge difference between showing something on a phone, on a tablet, on the cloud, on the internet, or whatever, whatever application you're using to share your images compared to something like that. Huge difference. The minute you hold one of those in your hand and you realize, good Lord, this is the way it really is supposed to be presented, you'll want to explore photo printing at home. But it's something that you really have to uh, think hard about. Printers such as the ones that we have here in this room, and there are 13 of them, are pretty demanding as far as the care that they need to continue to print, continue to output the quality that you expect from them after you spent all that money, especially on the ink, if you use original inks. So what would you consider? So the first thing that I would think, it's like buying a car. What if this is your first car ever? You know how many models or cars there are? Even 2020s only, maybe 2021 already, who knows? And as far back as say 2000 and even earlier, People like older cars. I do too. But anyway, there are hundreds of models of cars. How do you choose a car if this is your first car? How do you choose a printer? Lucky for us, there's only a couple dozen different models that you would consider buying as a home printer. And myself, I only concentrate on my major top five. We're just going to talk about the needs that you have as a photographer when you are thinking about producing paper prints or photos on paper. So what would you need to consider? Assume that you're going to be fully committed, that's the biggest thing, to maintaining these instruments. I like to call them instruments because they're very intricate. I have three big, no, I have four 17 inch printers. So that's one aspect. What is my maximum width capacity that I will demand from my printers? Well. This is actually quite big and it's only 13 by 19. So if this is all you need, then you really not necessarily need something like this. You can get a Pro 10 or a Pro 100 from Canon. I said I wasn't gonna discuss brands, but that kind of gives you an idea. Capacity and tie it to a name and model of printer. So you need to consider, okay, 
Do I only need 13 by 19? Maybe 13 by 25 is what you can max get out of any of these printers, the Canon line that is. Or do I need something wider? Do I need to produce wider prints? What kind of papers do I plan? Do I think I'm going to be printing on? Do I want to make gallery type prints on very sumptuous type matte surface papers with a nice texture? You're probably going to have to move over to a pigment type printer. So the Pro 100 is out. As attractive as that printer is, and I got three of them, yeah, so I should know, you may have to consider a pigment ink printer. If you're only going to be printing on glossy papers, luster, burrita type papers, those are fine art papers, by the way, but they have a sheen to them. So anything that has a bit of a shine, you can print with a Pro 100 on it, and you will be ecstatically happy with the results, okay? Again, but remember, 13-inch wide capacity max by about 25 if you do a custom paper configuration. Normally, it's just A3 Plus or 13 by 19 and smaller, down to about 4 by 6. So all of your little snapshots that you want to create for friends and family, you can do that, knock them right out with the Pro 10 without a single problem. And when you need to print larger prints, that is the perfect printer. As long as your paper is glossy, shiny, or slightly shiny, or luster, or satin, whatever, anything that when you hold it to the light, it has a sheen to it. So if it's matte, forget it. It will work, but it will not produce the results that you may be expecting as far as like deep blacks. So what if you need 17 inch capacity by whatever? That whatever is what will dictate whether you print on something like this or a PA-100. Each has totally different capacity levels. So this will print 17 by 25 and with the upgraded firmware, 17 to 47 which is larger than i would ever want okay so the 17 inch capacity this will cover it the pa 100 will give you 17 up to 510 inches i believe that's what i've been able to set a custom size to max that's ridiculous but i mean it gives you that capability which to me is just ludicrous so these are all fairly new within the last four or five years Okay, there's really nothing drastically new out there that will work for a home user per se who just wants to put a printer on top of his desktop, such as this. I'm using my old dining room table. We have a much smaller one now that the kids are out of the house. So we don't need something this big anymore. So I have all my stuff here. Now, you need to have enough room for your printer. You need to have enough room from the rear to the front. Right now, I got this about as far front as I could possibly get it. And even if I open up this tray to max, it's in my way. I can't sit here any longer. I would have to get up and print elsewhere. So that's something to consider. The rear loader needs to have enough room in the back. That top loader, you see how big that is back there? So this printer literally takes up almost the four and a half feet this table is. So you have to have enough room. So consider, I need this capacity, but I don't have the room. Well, then you can't do what you wish to do. You're going to have to create an environment that will allow you to position this. And this has to be placed where you're going to use it from year to year. You cannot be moving this printer around. We won't get into that aspect. Some printers are like that, and some printers can be readily moved from place to place. Now, 24-inch wide capacity, that involves roll printing. And the next level up from this is the 2000. Now the 2100 has a slightly different improvements that makes it more of a production printer. So another question you might ask, and the same, to hap the same happens with the Epson line. You have printers that go from the 17 inch to a 17 inch larger ink palette. Yeah, it gets very confusing, but really what you need to do is just look at your space, look at your needs, how big a print do I need to make ever, okay? And then if you have the money, you can say, and I recommend everybody does that because it keeps you at the very end of the day, 
A year from now, you're going to wish you had bought that next largest capacity printer. It happens all the time. And you may end up with two printers. Okay. So figure out if 13 inch is what you're going to probably be printing on. Consider getting a 17 inch capacity printer. That gives you that extra capacity that you may need that one time somebody asks you for a 17 by whatever. I can do it because I happen to have that capacity printer. Whereas you normally would print 13 by 19 and nothing larger, but when the time comes for you to be printing something larger, you will not have to send it to a local lab to be produced. You will be doing the production yourself. And so again, so many different aspects. I cannot really touch on everyone because they are basically determined by your needs, your situation and such. So in my case right here, why does Jose have 13 printers because I have a printing channel and I have to have all of these examples to be able to answer your questions. But if I had to choose, and again, how many times do I print 17 by something? Very seldom, very seldom. The only time I did that is like right here. This is a 17 by 24 print. That's the same print you saw earlier, but this can be fitted through this printer easily. Whereas if I was tied to a 13 inch capacity printer, I would never be able to print that one of a kind every once in a while size print. Okay. So what my needs, what my print sizes are that I need, the paper types that I'm going to be printing on. Oh, I left something out very important. Am I going to be printing with OEM inks constantly forever and ever? Or do I want at some time to switch over to third party inks? That would require a whole new video to discuss that aspect because not all printers that are available today can be transformed into a printer that can use third party products. Some of them do not allow you to do that. So I hope this kind of clarified a little bit. I know it's still very confusing and I know I'm going to be bombarded by questions from you guys, but uh, you know, go ahead and do so. That keeps that particular video up in the algorithm because it has a lot of activity. So if you have any questions specifically to your needs, don't forget to just ask below again. Also, one thing to consider is your taste. Uh, you may not like one brand over another brand. That happens. So I usually don't become very biased for a particular brand. I will buy a printer depending on what the features are and what it offers me. And the way to do that is to go to the website and read the paraphernalia that they publish okay it'll tell you all of the specs and you look at those specs and you say okay this is something that i would definitely need oh this is a bunch of stuff i really never would you ever use then don't consider that model will it be able to produce what you need and only you know what that is okay again it's just like a car or any other a blender a tv a camera there's too many out there you pick the one that strikes your fancy as far as looks, sometimes specifications mostly, and performance. All right. If you guys got any questions, like I said, specifically about any printer that you may be interested in, just ask below and I will try to answer you. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Happy printing, everybody. Happy printer choice making as well. Bye-bye, everyone.